John, John, th that's not your call. You can say what you want to say about how the fire department functioned in this. You can say what you want to say about whether it was routine or not. What you don't get to say is whether it's a news story. Jerry Nachman's Unless one of the people who do get to say what's a news story. Yeah, one of a dozen who've assembled on this Friday morning, as they do every weekday, to decide what will appear on the 6 o'clock news. Now, do you want to give us the piece of paper or not? Nachman is the news director, right, the boss. And, 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 and at the moment, case, he's trying to muscle a document on the fatal fire from a reluctant fire department official. He really has turned out to be a hump. He says uh, it's, it's not a news story. It's a, it's a media event. One small skirmish in a battle against a much more formidable enemy than a minor fire official, yeah. the clock. Right. He heard, he heard. It's nearly 11 a.m., seven hours beyond this gathering of executives, editors, producers, and writers, lies an hour of television time that must be filled with news. Of the hundreds of items that have surfaced overnight in the newsroom, on wire machines, over the telephone, in the morning papers, 21 will make it to the 6 o'clock news. 18-year-old woman beaten and robbed. Assignment editor Mike Callahan ticks off the most promising uh, candidates. Lakote Basque has uh, made the dirty oh, list. Oh, right. Rats, rat droppings. Some are straightforward and obvious. A New Jersey man has hijacked an airliner with City Council President Carol Bellamy on board. An actor is savagely be beaten afraid. by a street gang and I mean, becomes an instant Bernard Goetz fan. Other items trigger debate, like what to do about conflicting claims by officials regarding subway safety. I think the story to do is you've got Al D'Amato saying he's afraid to ride a subway, his bodyguard's afraid to ride a subway, his daughter wouldn't take a job in New York because she was fondled on the subway. He says they're too dangerous. What's he going to do about it? Then you've got the mayor of the city saying the subways are safe. The debate eats up time. Tension yeah, you know The morning meeting becomes frenetic. Phone calls to reporters in the field mixing with the litany of possible stories. The guy goes to the restaurant, yeah, the bakery, like to do it as a news kills story the tonight. father, shoots his estranged way wife, I mean, turns the gun on himself. We you got a phone that Reggie's on five. New Jersey correspondent Reggie Harris, already trying to cover the hijacking and a flu outbreak, box at doing a story on a murder-suicide. Is Reggie kissing off this story? I mean, Brett Marcus, the producer of the 6 o'clock news, figures maybe we ought to kiss off some of the crime stories. Is anything a little lighter? Got a lot of, uh, got the, the golden crime and ultra violence. Let me keep going. Going. 15 minutes after the morning meeting, Marcus has decided what stories he'll use and the order they'll appear in the program. Civillo on subway, uh, I don't care, subway crime, whatever you want to call it. Mary Savillo is dispatched to cover the subway safety story, one of 17 tape items that must be shot, written, and edited in the next six and a half hours. Traffic is a constant enemy. Valuable time is lost getting to her first location, Transit Police Headquarters in Brooklyn. It takes more time to tape interviews with Chief Meehan and several officers. I think that the program has to have some balance. While his reporters toil in the field, Marcus continues to worry about the newscast being top-heavy with crime. It's current, it's breaking news. I'm just concerned sometimes that we give people a sort of a false sense of, of what happens in our area on a given day. On batteries and the batteries are dead. For the moment, Mary Savillo's concern is less philosophical. Dead batteries. Correcting the technical problem takes time, and at 20 past two, time is running out. At Brooklyn subway station, she and her crew run a gauntlet of young men mugging for the camera to interview subway riders about crime. This is Chuck. You and I are going to have a little conversation. You've got the top of the six and nine. In the newsroom, Marcus's ruminations about crime are shattered by a breaking story. A second verdict in Ariel Sharon's libel suit against Time magazine has just been announced. Less than three hours to airtime, and Marcus has to restructure the entire newscast. Manhole covers explode, train derailments, verdicts, always on Friday afternoons. And then we go, reaction about the safety on the trains here is mixed. At 4.30, Mary Savilla was back in the newsroom, showing Marcus the script she's written for a story. Well, the mayor may have been a regular writer back then, but since since then, he has dwelled on the... Pro Are you... Look. Yeah, I'm listening. But since then, he has dwelled on the problems of car size and not subway cars. Marcus questions the relevance of comments made by a subway writer who calls himself Dr. Lovebeam. Is he a doctor, or is it just... Is no, that's what he... Street that's urchin. Her, that's what he calls himself. Mary defends her use of the interview and wins the argument. Is Three, two, one. But Dr. Love was one who defends the politician's right to speak to train safety. An hour and a half before airtime, she begins the tedious process of editing her day's work into a two-minute package for the news. From WNBC-TV, this is News 4, New York. One, we have more now from Mary Sousa. Sounds like the city. The transit bosses won't comment on the senator's statements. In one minute. But Dr. Love was one who the politician's right to speak to train safety. Seven, 
Six, what he's talking about. Five, he's probably seven, got a live sauce. Four, you know. Stand by, ready. Three, camera two, four, two. two. Mary Savello, News 4, Brooklyn. Yeah. Take four, Q. Well, television news, as you might have gathered, is a pressure cooker. And the pressures don't always encourage excellence. Critics accuse us of everything from shallowness to sensationalism to sometimes outright hype, which brings us to Bernard Getz. Tomorrow, we'll look at how television handled the Getz case, including our now infamous exclusive about what the subway gunman ate for lunch one day.